Okay. The following interview was conducted with Gabisa Ajeta, the Distinguished Professor of Agronomy for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Friday, January 29, 2010 in Stewart Center. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Librarian. Welcome and good afternoon to you. Thank you. Thank you. Ta let's tell me where and when you were born and your parents in early years. Yes, I uh, was born in uh, uh, on Ethiopian calendar, uh, it's a different calendar, but on June 1st, 1950, um, in a small village um, in Ethiopia called Wallankomi. Uh, it's in the Oromia region, uh, West Central Ethiopia. Uh, my parents were uh, um, Motu Ayano, my mother, and uh, my father, uh, Ejet Adasa. Okay, and did they do, was it farming, is that agriculture there? Yes, they were, we were all in a very small farming community. Uh -huh. Everybody that lived there had uh, farming okay. uh, to engage in. And now talk us a little about when you went to grade school and then high school, go ahead. That, yes. That's, an inter that's interesting. Yes, I, uh, there wasn't any formal school uh, when I was a small child, and, but there was a church school. And uh, every kid that has uh, parental uh, encouragement attended the church school, and my mother sent me there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were all doing well. Um, but And then when uh, other communities had opportunity to attend formal education, uh, we called it English school. And we didn't have any opportunity until one year, I was about 10 years old, uh, someone uh, who had kids our age uh, had the means and started to um, uh, start their own school for their children. And so people who knew them could, um, go, to this could go to them. And, uh, was it in the village where you were living? It was in the same village, but uh, uh, those of us from humble backgrounds were not included in that. Oh, okay. uh, so we okay. couldn't attend. Uh, later on, uh, there was community pressure, and people approached this family and whether or not they would uh, expand the school instead of holding it on their co compound, um, uh, build up or uh, rent a, um, a small unit in a village or put it together. Mm -hmm. And there was already a house that was there, and so uh, they agreed to have a, a school where everybody could attend. Go. That's right. Mm. What uh, after grade school? Then you went to high high school. What we call high school, but was uh, not in your village, though. Uh, uh, actually, before that, this okay. school that I described was right. only there for a year. Okay. Um, and then in one year we went through grades one to three, and so at the end of the year that we were told we completed. I think I should have signed up for that school. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it made it a lot easier on my parents. And uh, and so they wanted to have room for other kids to come to do that, and so they said, "You're done." And uh, that's well, that's acceleration. Yeah, that's right. That's when we uh, looked for other opportunity, and my mother found an arrangement and made arrangement for me to uh, attend a, a school about 20 kilometers away from there. And uh, uh, but that meant that we, you know, we had to walk, and we couldn't do it every day, and so we boarded a place in a small town where the school Ooh, was, okay. and so we would walk up the 20 kilometers on Sunday, and then come back late Friday, uh, walk down the 20 kilometers, okay. and the whole school, the whole uh, week we would we would stay there. And so th we did that for from grade four to grade eight. Okay. Was the school very large, though? Were there a lot of children there? Yes. Children from your village also went there, too? Uh, no, I mm -hmm. was the only one from my village okay. Uh, okay. that year. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then the next few years, others came. Others came, came too, yeah. as well. Yeah. 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 Well, that's very yeah. nice. And so it was a big school. I don't recall how many hundred kids were there. Um, but... Uh, uh, I would suspect maybe close to a thousand or eight hundred okay. uh, kids. Was the language of, uh, in English? Uh, yes, uh, okay. beginning in f grade four. Okay, and, okay. Uh, beginning in fourth grade, um, every subject we took uh, was in English, except uh, there was a language for the local, et for official Ethiopian language, and we did that as a, as a language class. Mm -hmm. And so we, uh, 
And then there was this acceleration that started in the village where I come from, and so kids that uh, did well would get double promotion. And uh, um, the first semester I, I did well, I stood first in my class, so I pushed, pushed to fifth grade, which meant that we, were, we, we went through it uh, fairly fast. And then at the end of that, it was a huge was that, challenge. Would that have been eighth grade? Eighth grade, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then um, uh, after that, you take a national exam at the end of eighth grade. Um, and then depending on the score, you may choose what school to go to. And if you did well, you get your choice. Um, I was fortunate enough to uh, have uh, done well. And then what I chose was uh, an agricultural high school. Uh, it was a boarding school. The, the reason why I chose it was not because I was interested in agriculture, but because it was a boarding school. And the school that I attended was put up by Oklahoma State University. I was going to ask you, how did that come about with some of the uh, AID funding? Is that how That's it That's right. Okay. Uh, in those days, um, is a continuation of the European Marshall Plan, okay. where the U.S. government was helping poor developing countries uh, establish their institutions of learning and uh, research and, and, and services. And so the, what they would do would be they would identify a U.S. university that is interested in international development work, and they would give them a contract to start a school or, or help strengthen an existing school. And so Oklahoma State University got the nod for a staff working with Ethiopia. And they went there to establish a college and uh, 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 parked themselves in the beginning in a place where there was some facility to start the college until uh, the new college they were building was, okay. was completed. And so when they left to the compound where the college was going to be, instead of abandoning this place that they left behind, they converted it into a, an agricultural high school and made a connection between the agricultural high school and the college where some of the better students that did well in the high school could go, right. could go on to the college and those others that, uh, that didn't would then join the government and work in the agricultural extension service right, to okay. help rural community development activities. Right, okay. yeah. And in high school, I know you went uh, some basketball and volleyball? I did, yes. I did. Uh, I was a uh, very, very small kid uh, when I went in and all of a sudden I, I, I grew tall. <laughs> and uh, because the boarding school, there's a lot of peer encouragement or peer pressure, however you you look at it, and we encouraged each other. We participated in all kinds of activities. And then, uh, naturally, I drifted to uh, the sports where my height was an advantage, and I picked both volleyball and basketball. Big and, help. <laughs> yes. And so I, um, before long, I was, I was uh, on the varsity team, both in uh, men's vo volleyball and basketball. Uh -huh. In high school, was it just for, bo was it uh, boys only? Or? Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. It was uh, only boys. And then the, you lived right there? We lived on campus, and um, uh, that's, uh, uh, f if you can imagine a lot of these kids coming for, from rural communities, uh, particularly very poor upbringing. And so all of a sudden, you put them in a boarding school that's fairly similar to schools in the United States. And so there is a huge cultural shock I mean, uh, in a positive sense uh, l right, later sure, on. Sure. But you come from uh, rural villages where you didn't have uh, enough to eat and uh, not, you know, no clothing uh, to speak of and so on. And all of a sudden... Completely different. Very different. And so... Um, we were we were provided for uh, by the college, uh, by the high school. Um, we get a, a closing a couple of times a year. We get hot meals three times a day, and and you know cakes. The regular and boarding and, school that you uh, that you that's right. mm -hmm. did. Where were the teachers? Did, did Oklahoma State uh, also man as far as the instruction was concerned? Well, every yeah, you know, all of our teachers were from uh, from Oklahoma. Oh, okay. uh, even in the high school, and then when we went to college, okay. and they were from there as well. So, 
uh, we got, in my view, we got an excellent education. Sure. Um, and so it was, uh, you know, it, it, these were very impressionable years for for, for uh, typical young kids, and and so coming from, you know, communities where you have your own your own culture, but not exposed to right. the international community. Uh, there is so much education that that would go on, and and so I I credit my high school education as giving me a, a great foundation to uh, for both professional growth and and all right. just personal growth as well. Right. Mm -hmm. but were the classes very large? Uh, no. Oh. No, the whole school were 200 kids. Wow. Yeah, so you so really got a lot of individual. A lot of individual that, uh, To me, mentoring. that would be a big help for the ones who really are coming from a different, you know, uh, primary level school. They, they did, but, but remember that you got that opportunity on the basis of your, your score. And a lot of these kids, even though they came from poor backgrounds and poor school systems and so on, these are bright kids. Right. And so um, we were 50 being admitted in any one year, and we have two sections, section A and B. So 9A, 9B, 10A, 10B, and all the way 12A, 12B. Sure. And so and uh, we had one dormitory for the 25 kids in one section. And so it's uh, the personal growth I'm talking about is you are put in in a dormitory with 24 other kids and you stay with them all four years. And so you've got 24 different personalities to deal with. And so, um, but, but we were a community, very community growth and uh, it teaches you how to right. work and live with people, and and also you develop uh, brotherhood. You know, with, uh, just like kids in in fraternities here, and and so sure. it's it's been a great experience. Right. Mm. Is this high school still going? Uh, no. Oh. Uh, in fact, uh, after we graduated, I was the last. Um, I was in the last uh, class of the high school, and at the end of that, it was converted into. Uh, a junior college, and now it's uh, a university college. Oh, that's, yeah. That's In fact, I just visited it uh, after the World Food Prize, and, and it's a, a college of agriculture of 2,000 students now. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Yes. And then from there, you went to the, now the college is called uh, Har Haramark. Yeah, at that and time. And that was close in, right near the school? No, oh. no. In fact, it was, um, you know, I went from the village where I grew up in. I went west uh, 300 kilometers. Um, and uh, the college I went to was on the eastern part of the country, uh, about 500 kilometers. So it's in the opposite ends of the country. Um, that was how, where it was, uh, the college was uh, located and, and we went there. Yeah, can you tell us a little bit about campus life and? Were you, did your parents, were they able to, did uh, they come and visit you while you were there? No, oh, no. Okay. The, the okay. culture of uh, parents uh, visiting kids in college and so on doesn't exist there. Okay, uh, okay. Mostly, you go home. Yeah, you go home. Okay. Uh, you, 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 you do the long travel and, uh, and so parents don't really engage sure. in particular. They have a lot more other problems to worry about. They got enough to that, take care of at home. They right. know you're being taken care of. That's right. right. That's right. That's did, true. Well, mm -hmm. and were there any? Did you play in athletics? When? Yes, I did. Okay. And and uh, just to give you a background, now I went to a high school that was run by Oklahoma State University, mm -hmm. and with 200 students, and uh, the college was run by the same I Oklahoma State that. University, right. and now we are about 400. Kids and so double the population, but again, you know, on the on the bigger scale, a very small community, very uh, tight knit community, and more mentoring again by uh, faculty, both Ethiopians and and Americans. Um, and the one thing that I can say about both the high school and the college is not only you get good education. But, but also there is this knowledge base that is inundated and, and inculcated in you 
about serving the country. And it's, it's part of what in this country is called the land-grant university model. You get education, mm -hmm. and with that education, you go back and serve the community right. through agricultural education, agricultural right. research and technology generation and so on. So that was the kind of uh, knowledge that uh, this linkage with Oklahoma State University yeah. provided to Very us. Very good foundation. Good Wonderful base. foundation. And yes. worked out nicely for what your career what Pat took. I give I give credit to that upbringing, to, to that foundation. Right. And then, let's see, then afterwards, then you were, um, before you came to Purdue, you were a research assistant. Is that before you came to Purdue, after you graduated, then what came next? Uh, right. I had uh, finished college, and, and uh, if, if I may say this, uh, um, a college, the college I went to in my time, instead of a four-year program, was a five-year program. The reason why it's a five-year program is they put in a service year where you would leave the, Camp. the campus and sent out in different directions in various areas, whether it's in education, in research, or in technology transfer, help um, um, in the agricultural development of the country. Um, the service is important to who you're providing the service to, but the growth for us was wonderful as well. You, you've had three years of college education, and now you're sent out at the end of the third year to go out and uh, and serve, and during the Some year of in the somewhere in the country, and during that service year, you get the realities, uh, an understanding of the realities in in um, in rural communities in your country, and uh, we come back really fully strengthened uh, by the need to serve, and um, uh, and then you come back, you finish the, your sure. final year in college, and, and graduate. At the end of the uh, fifth year when we graduated, uh, the university inherently will choose a certain number of kids in the group that are from the graduating class and identify those that have potential to be on the faculty. And so you would serve there for about a year or two and then they will send you overseas to get your graduate education. So I was one of those lucky ones to be retained by the university there to be potential faculty member. And then um, uh, I worked there for about 15 months and uh, there was an opportunity to go to Canada on a scholarship and uh, I, I didn't want to go to Canada, it's too cold and, uh, and, and then finally I was fortunate enough to find an opportunity to come to Purdue. Yeah. Tell uh, us how that came about. Uh, it was a very chance happening. Um, a lot of those things occur that way. That's right. A chance happening that uh, um, uh, a, a professor from Purdue University made a major discovery in his sorghum research and, uh, and f to pursue uh, further the research that he was doing, he chose Ethiopia to come and visit. And he'd never been outside the United States. And so. Was this Professor X? Professor the? John Axtell. Okay. And so John Axtell would uh, uh, seek some assistance from other people, and he would get to know the person who was my mentor when, when I was a, a college student. And then when I was serving there, he was my boss. And so he wrote to Dr. Burhane um, and saying that he wants to come to Ethiopia and would like to travel, looking at some sorghum varieties there and collect them. And so he said, sure. And there would be a young man by the name Gabisa who would be accompanying us on this, on this travel. And so at the end of the week of working with him, uh, he said he's impressed by this young man. Uh, what is the possibility of having him come and study at Purdue? Um, he said, in fact, it would work very well because he had just decided not to go to Canada, and he may be he may consider Purdue. And so <laughs> I jumped at that, and, and that's how it happened. That's very yeah. that, it's a very nice. Yeah, yes, that worked out well. Great, yeah, great, it was, great. and then but then after you fi you stayed here and got your PhD. Yes, then I stayed from there. Okay. Oh, that's that's right. I stayed here, uh, did both my masters and PhD under John Axtell. And did you do your research in Ethiopia? Did you go no, back and forth? Oh, no, okay. No, all my both my masters and PhD research uh, were conducted here at Purdue, 
And uh, Purdue was a center of excellence in global sorghum research even then. Um, and Professor Axtell and his colleagues were, were uh, recognized for yeah. the area of research, particularly nutritional quality area. And so there was a federal grant from the US government that was coming to Purdue and to allow that. And so I worked both for my master's and PhD in the sorghum nutritional quality area, and that's what, what I worked on. And uh, at the end of that, uh, when it was time for me to return to Ethiopia, um, uh, the situation changed back home. Uh, Ethiopia, uh, was, the emperor was overthrown by a communist group, and the country had uh, identified itself with, uh, with the USSR, and relations with the, uh, the US had soured. Um, and conditions for a lot of people in the country were not very good, and there was civil war between factions over there, and I was encouraged not to return. Uh, but I was very eager to go back and serve in Africa, and fortunately I found an opportunity. Yeah, that's where that, uh, where you did the, the Sudan. That's right, and so I joined an international crop research uh, center uh, that was funded by the United Nations Development Program, uh, they were uh, 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 good enough to hire me, and I was fortunate enough to get the job. And so I was assigned in the Sudan, worked there for five years, um, and uh, it's one of the most satisfying parts of my career, where I was able to develop the first um, yeah, uh, drought-tolerant sorghum hybrid uh, and promoted that commercially in, in the country, and, and uh, that was really very successful. And so it happened. Now, I, joined, I went there in 1979, and the hybrid was released at the end of 1983. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Was that pretty well funded, though, for the re research over there when the, you were doing what? Yes, okay. the, research, the research at the time was funded by the United Nations Development Program, very well funded, very well supported. And, um, and so there were, it was a two-man program. Uh, there was an Indian fellow who were working on millets, and I was working on sorghum. Um, and we were well funded by our center, uh, very well supported, and the national program that we worked with accepted us very well. And so it just, uh, again, I guess there's no other way of saying it, very, very satisfying. Yeah, yeah very right. satisfying. And then I guess the next stage is Purdue, right? That's right. At the <laughs> end of five years, um, um, when Did you keep in touch with Purdue during the time you were in the Sudan? Uh, yes. In fact, um, uh, the organization that hired me uh, at that time, part of the fringe benefits was you would get um, an air ticket to go back to your home country. And so when I joined, I knew I, w I wasn't going to be able to go to Ethiopia. So I asked if I could designate West Lafayette, Indiana as my home base. <laughs> and so we used to come here for vacation every year. And uh, we lived there for five years. Were you married, Sudan, at, were you married at that time? That's oh, right. Okay. And Sudan is next door to Ethiopia. And so we never could travel, unfortunately, to Ethiopia all five years. But we were able to come back here um, for every year. And so that contact has been very useful because I was able to uh, remain in touch with people here, and when there was opportunity here on the faculty, people said, oh, how about asking a visa if you would apply? And so they That's encouraged it. me to apply, and uh, it, was a, uh, it was a godsend because by then, our daughter who was born here in West Lafayette uh, was getting to be a school age, and there wasn't a school for her, and so we decided maybe uh, it's best to come back here and where I could have a uh, professional uh, sure. uh, activity to work on, and my family would have a home base here, right. and that's how we, we ended up here. Let me ask you about your family. Where did you Where did you meet your wife? Uh, uh, my wife and I met in college, and uh, so she's from Ethiopia. She's well? from Ethiopia. She was a freshman the year that I was working on campus, and uh, we got to to meet there. Um, and so I came alone here anyway because we were not married. When you came for your graduate. When I came to graduate school. And so between my master's and PhD, um, my major professor, John Axtell, was invited for, to give a talk in, one, in another African country. Um, unfortunately, he couldn't accept the invitation because 
he had another commitment to go to Austria about the same time. Uh, but he was kind enough, he asked the US AID uh, if he would send me instead. Uh, he told them he had a good African student working with him, he would do well uh, representing the program, uh, would you mind if I sent him? And they said, well, if you have the money and you, know, you have confidence on the young man, you could send him. So I wrote my girlfriend that I left behind and and uh, maybe come in that way and and uh, I did and and uh, took a three week or four week vacation and in that time we got married and and I was able again fortunate enough to get her out of the country at that time sure. even though conditions were not yeah. were not as uh, were not good and so that's how we came back and so uh, two years after I've already been in the United States yeah. and she came with me. That's very good. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about the new research. You're on the Purdue faculty. Uh, yes. I know you shared some of these others but for the interview. Go ahead. Uh, yes. Um, um, Did you continue your association with Dr. Extel while you were here? Uh, right, right. You know, he also worked on sorghum right. and that's how I studied under him. And remember I mentioned earlier that uh, the sorghum program in at Purdue, Purdue was very well recognized under his leadership. Uh, but a lot of all that we did uh, before that was in the nutritional quality area, to making the crop more nutritious for people who live on it or animals that are being fed on it. And so people in animal science, in biochemistry, in agronomy worked on that. And so the premise upon which I was hired is Purdue is getting to be a center of excellence and we need to grow beyond nutritional quality. And so we need to do other research areas on sorghum and, uh, and the areas of drought tolerance and disease resistance and so on. Uh, they wanted to hire somebody to do that. And so uh, I came back, even though we all worked on sorghum, the division of labor is I was working on drought tolerance and uh, parasitic weed resistance. And those were the two areas that I chose, and, and other disease resistance as well. And so uh, John and I divided the uh, program that way, but but I still enjoyed the mentorship from him oh, and, sure. uh, in the early in the early days. And right. um, and so today we've become a mu much more comprehensive program in term in, in our research area, and so it's uh, it's among the uh, very well known programs in the world. And you did very well here, right? It was, and, and a lot of the things that you, but it takes, a, a lot, sometimes people say, it, it takes a while, you have to keep working on it all the time, right? That's and correct, and, that's correct. And we did, um, um, and part of the, the reason why it takes time is one, research is uh, like a building block. You, you, you right. discover something, you add on top of that and gradually, keeping in mind all, uh, all the way through that this cumulative knowledge would lead to solving a real life problem in, in a community and so on. And so uh, that's one. And the other reason why it takes time is it's not only the science and the breakthroughs in, in, li in science that, that uh, helps communities or people. It is an institutional building process that, that right. needs to be there. And so you need to work with people in developing countries um, to uh, build their communities, build their institutions. Uh, for example, uh, one of the things um, that I was uh, credited uh, in was um, this value chain approach to making a technology work in a community. And so we had developed drought tolerant parasitic weed resistant sorghums, but it wasn't being taken up. And so I thought of um, uh, a way to get that um, um, uh, catalyzed. And so uh, we put together um, a technology package uh, that w included a water conservation measure, uh, soil fertility, and so that not only are they able to produce more, but can they produce surplus enough so that they would market uh, the surplus and then being able to afford better the investment that are necessary for buying fertilizers, buying seeds, and so on. 
And then also, that doesn't just happen, so you have to help create the market opportunities. Right. For the chain. That's right, the value chain approach is, um, you know, the farm practices and uh, the inputs that need to be there, and so the input market for seeds and fertilizers, right. and then the produce at the end, and to market the, the grain, and also, if possible, linking them with things that would va add value to the raw material that is being produced. Right. And in our, in our situation, we, we talk to bakeries uh, to accept sorghum instead of wheat or to make a composite flour. Uh, we talked, we, we worked with cookie factory or a breweries. And, and so those kinds of extracurricular activities need to take place in, in a culture where uh, the public-private partnership is very well developed as we have in the United States. It's not an issue. Right, but in right. developing countries, it's a, a lot thing. of that will have to be developed. All right, mm -hmm. and a continuing work in a lot hadn't been done be before in that area. That's you know, right. So that That's works right. now. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. um, the World Food Prize. Yes. Um, how did you, uh, I, I read that you got a phone call, yeah. okay? Yeah. And uh, I, I share a similar thing. Dr. Geddes was quoted with a similar thing. He got a phone call and they he wasn't sure and so he transferred it over to somebody <laughs> else and they called him about the metal. He told, had told me that. So right. I, I think I get the same reaction if somebody would right. be right. another survey, right. you know, I'd hang up. Right. Uh, <laughs> I received a phone call from the World Food Price Foundation uh -huh. and uh, I had just uh, gone to Washington you, was uh, that you done that te uh, the testimony? Well, I went to I uh, gave a testimony to the U.S. Okay. Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Was it good? I, I downloaded that. It was very good. Oh, thank Excellent. you. Well done. Thank you. And so, and so the president of the World Food Prize Foundation started with giving me a compliment about the testimony, and and following that, and then he started talking about the World Food Prize Week that was coming up in October. Uh, that immediately I just made the connection and said, oh, he's calling me to, in, to ask me to speak at the ceremony. <laughs> We're and, getting the program together. Uh, right? That's right. <laughs> so he said, uh, you know, the program is really developing. It's looking good. And we've, uh, we're, I think it's going to be a good week. And uh, he said, are you coming? And I said, I have not planned. And so I said, well, we really would like for you to come. Uh, when I didn't say anything, and then he says, we really would like for you to come because you are the 2009 World Food Prize winner. <laughs> so I had not expected it, so I was stunned. That's wonderful. Yeah. Do you have any idea, do you think that you've been nominated? Do you have any, do you, sometimes people say that, that I've talked to people where they sort of, um, there have been, but they didn't get, it depend, depending on the prize or something or some special award. Yeah, that know. was exactly what happened with me. I think I was nominated uh, 2004. And uh, do you, do you happen to find that out by serendipity or? Uh, no, the, you know, the, when they do something, then they have to have information. A lot of the information I know, and they don't. Right. And so somehow, finally, they need to touch base. They need to touch base. Right. And, um, so, but then the nomination is good only for three years. Okay. And so when 2007 was over, I said it was it was over, and uh, by then I had already gone on a sabbatical leave and worked in, in Africa and I came back, um, I, sure. I, I, I thought it was over. And not only that, but meanwhile, there was a Purdue person that won in 2007. And I said, there's just no way they would give it to another Purdue person. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> you never know. You never know. Might get the a Kennedy half dollar, yeah, who right. knows, right? <laughs> right. And so that, that was why I wasn't even suspecting that he may be calling me about that. And that was a very nice thing. And you had a special ceremonies and people came from your, was your mother able to come? Uh, no, oh, no, unfortunately. But you have, you have seen her, you've been back. Yes, to, right? the World Food Prize uh, uh, Foundation sent me back with a photographer uh, and to get some footage for uh, uh, the, the program they put together. Oh, January. before you got the award. That's right. Oh, I see, They sent okay. me there and, and so, I went to my village, uh, the high school that I went to, the college I went to, and so that we had uh, testimonials from people, uh, side pictures, and so on. And, uh, what, what did you say, did your mother say? What? Um, 
Uh, she she couldn't understand it. She couldn't understand, it. and so she's generally. Is your father still alive or? Uh, no, my oh. father is gone. Okay. Um, so my my mother understood that something good had happened, but but she has no. But company. she knew you were coming. Uh, yes, oh yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Uh, that, she still that, recognizes me. That, yeah. And that picture is nice of her oh, with the two you. of you, sort of in the background. Yeah. I think yes. it's a great shot. Yeah. yeah. And of course, then afterwards, you have the media, and then you had the day here at Purdue, which was yes. nice. Yes. Uh, you know, it's, someone said, uh, you know, your life is never the same after that, and I think to a great extent that is true. Uh, there is so much demand on your time. Um, a lot of good things have happened in terms of people congratulating me and so on. I, I received over maybe 2,500 emails uh, from around the world, notes from people that I never knew that were touched by uh, the work. And, uh, we're all and human what it beings. Meant, and, what it yeah, meant to what, the people. That's right. That, so that's really that, key, and they realize that. They realize that, and, and I got that. Um, but then on the other hand, uh, uh, the great thing as far as I'm concerned that this did is not uh, not only the, the personal recognition, but the, the platform right. that it's, it, it has been and it's going to be in terms of uh, the credibility, speaking on behalf of the poor, on behalf of the cause of the right. science. The international. So, yes. Right. And so that has been uh, very, very significant. I've had uh, a lot of demand on that to go around the world and speak uh, uh, until now. And from here to next September, for example, sure. I have 28 invitations wow. to go around. And One speak. of the things I read you, with the flyers that you got, you're going to set up a foundation uh, to, for educational, uh, which is very nice. Well, uh, that's what we're working on. Right. Um, but, but it's a uh, good thought, uh, yeah, and it really yeah, uh, it will yeah. mean the things go on. Yeah. The, yeah. Long after, yeah. long after yeah. you're gone. Uh, my family back. and I have decided that uh, uh, we have enough, and uh, fortunately for us, our children have attended college, and and. Uh, we Did they some of them come to Purdue? Uh, yes, okay. uh, a couple of them attended Purdue and others went somewhere else, and and so today we're we're uh, we're okay, and and so my children appreciate the fact that they've been given great opportunity because of the opportunities that I had um, in the early days, and so they realize there are many more that don't have the opportunity that I had, and they would like to help. And my children are, have good jobs and they have good network and linkages. And they, they said if we have a foundation, there would be many that they are around that, that would contribute to the foundation. And, and so initially we're thinking of creating the same kind of boarding school that I attended that gave me that opportunity. Very so, nice. It is, yeah. it, it's needed. Yes, right. badly needed. And, right. uh, and so we will see how it would go. Um, um, the, the, uh, it's a good thought, yeah, and it's a good yeah, plan. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. The, um, the other nice thing is that you got the, uh, the Nelson Innovation Prize that the, the governor set up, and you got it this year. This is wonderful. I, I, you know, ironic, I, you know. I, I, it's <laughs> yeah, it's ironic. Uh, he, you know, the fact did, he, that he probably, did he make any co comment to you? Because he, he has kind of a sense of humor from what I understand. He said, well, I didn't, I named it, and I'm giving it to another Purdue person as no, well. He, he didn't <laughs> say, and uh, you know, it's, I, was, I was surprised myself that he would do that. Um, I think that word was originally established to encourage uh, younger people from the state of uh, Indiana, right. and I think... It's I a nice award. It's a nice award. I hope he would do that in the future, uh, um, but uh, it was... Right. It was nice I want to talk a little about some of the mentoring. Oh, you talked about Dr. Axtell, and Larry Butler was another one, and I, I, I remember Dr. Butler because I did some literature searches, and uh. I knew Professor Axtell because uh, years ago, we got some things from the USDA, and there was money for finance, for literature searches, and so I did some for him, and we kind of got to know each other. And occasionally, I'd run into him at Smitty's, and he always spoke, and you know, yes, so I sort of yes, knew him. But I thought, yes. and you mentor students as well, and uh, yes. so it works both ways. That's right. Uh, I've been very fortunate to have had some really great mentors. Uh, certainly, the 
uh, John Axtell yeah, um, because he, right. as I keep saying, he literally picked me from Africa and brought me here and and then uh, he was a great, great mentor. He encouraged me and he saw in me very early on uh, some right. attributes that he thought had shown potential and these were attributes that I didn't even know that I had and so he he, realized, he nurtured correctly. that in sure. me and encouraged me, and, and so I'm very grateful. Uh, there are several others. Uh, One is your, is your uh, your faculty member at college. That's right. He was a guy who directed me to uh, study plant sciences, plant genetics. Um, he had just returned from uh, uh, university education in University of Minnesota and had heard about uh, the, the Nobel Prize that uh, Norm Borlaug had won. And so he, he said, you can do a lot with, you know, with a, a degree in genetics. And, um, um, and ironically, it, it's uh, kind of happened the way he, he uh, projected. And so I give him a lot of credit. And I think more than um, the fact that I, I won the World Food Prize, the fact that the education that you can do you can serve humanity through right. the opportunities that you have through plant genetics right. was, was very important. And then when I finished college, uh, the graduate school, uh, the person who was my supervisor was uh, uh, another uh, was a Purdue graduate, by a fellow by the name Lee House, and he was a great mentor. That's don't lose the forest for the trees. That's right. He was the one that he said um, <laughs> someone else who hired him and told him that uh, you know, don't, don't lose the forest. For I didn't realize years. he was a Purdue grad. That's he was, interesting. He yeah. was a, Purdue <laughs> grad, a graduate from here, a master's in biochemistry and a, a PhD in genetics. Uh -huh. uh, so I worked for him. And then uh, a f person who was very well known in the community here uh, was the director of international programs, Woods Thomas. Right. Uh, I Woods him. Was, was a, a great mentor. And, Super guy. Uh, yes. And he. He was, was committed a good contact to, because it's international. He was committed to international development, and uh, early on he engaged engaged me, and he uh, he was he sought my in, uh, my inputs and encouraged me and got me involved, and I'm very grateful for him as well. So, in return, uh, but the only way I can pay back uh, for these people is to try to you know reproduce or replicate. Uh, um, their own their vision on on encouraging yeah, younger people and right. I've been very fortunate to have worked with a lot of young people over the years and and uh, many of them now also are engaged in the kind of things that I do and it, so it's, it's and you teach that course in uh, your grad one of the graduate courses which is nice that's right I teach a graduate level course in uh, principles and methods of plant breeding. And I've also taught seminar series in the, in the past, and so sure. this is in the area of research that I do, and so I can relate to it well enough, and, and uh, I can impart that. The uh, good combination passion, of mentor and yeah, the teacher. That's right. Right, uh, which the is good. That I have for, okay. for the research. Uh, um, a couple, you and then you got your associations. You're still, do you still keep active in the crop science and see your professional associations? Uh, I am still a member. I'm not as active as I used to and be. And you're a fellow of the American uh, Advanced. That's right. I'm, right. I've been a yeah. fellow of. Uh, what about that, um, the Science Council, the consultant group on international agriculture research? Are you still involved with that? Yes, okay. I'm still a member of the uh, Science Council. Mm -hmm. uh, this is an advisory body of about seven people. And that provide um, advice to um, 15 international agriculture research centers on on science quality, science relevant, and sci relevance and science impact. And so it's a body that you serve for about three years and renewable for sure. for another three. And uh, uh, it's it's a wonderful opportunity because these 15 centers serve the entire globe in agricultural research uh, directed to particularly in developing countries and to be able to... It's a good contact. It's a offer, good association yeah, for to you. For uh, right. service through that has yeah. been very good. Mm -hmm. um, one of the other things that I read you, want maybe a dialogue between your, your, your friend, the uh, faculty member, who uh, at your university, uh, like yeah. a seminar series of some sort. Uh, right. When, okay. when I went back, I went back a month after the 
uh, World Food Prize. Uh -huh. um, the government of Ethiopia invited me to come back. And you got a, an award from them. Uh, that's right. right. And uh, the president of the country uh, gave me uh, uh, the highest medal, medal of honor that they, they would give to any of their citizens. Even though I'm no more a citizen there, they, they expressed On behalf their, of? Yes. And they expressed their, their pride by giving me that. And I was able to meet with the president and the prime minister. And then we held a, a dialogue on on agriculture and this, you know, on agriculture development uh, in Ethiopia and Africa, and uh, hundreds of people gathered for that. I was a keynote speaker there. Other people spoke, including my old mentor from from college, and and so we want to be holding that annual dialogue, and uh, I have suggested that that be named after my mentor from college. Very nice. Mm -hmm. That's very yeah. nice. Yeah. And a self-perpetuating kind That's of thing, right. which is good. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I'm going to uh, leave it and let you make some closing comments or something that I didn't ask that you would like to add or topic that I may have missed on. Uh, no, I, I think we've covered a lot of a lot, a lot of ground with this. Um, and uh, you're looking ahead. Uh, yeah, and uh, just in, in, in passing for uh, the younger generation in particular is sure. uh, what has been very important to me uh, is to want to be as good as I could be in, in my career, in my profession, in the science that I do. Uh, that is very important, to, to be the best scientist that you could be uh, in whatever field you, that you are, and as I tell my children. But also at the same time, it is, it is good to sustain and maintain this element of service in your background. Uh, okay. I think. If, uh, if we would think beyond our self-gratification to provide service and assistance to something bigger than ourselves. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, when, when you have gone through your career and so on, invariably I'm sure you would ask yourself, how have I made uh, the world a better place and what have I contributed? To be able to say that is just a wonderful uh, it's a great thing. Uh, good thing. All right, yeah. and it means so much, and it's very fulfilling. Yes. Self fulfilling, yes. which is and, really nice. And as John Axtell, my mentor, would say, you know, it's it's all about people, and so if in the process you impart that uh, passion to to others, and Impact. you give them a hand, and every step of the way, it's not only what you do collectively, what you would all do in serving humanity, serving society. Right. It's, it's a wonderful and It's thing. also serving yourself at the same that, time by right. doing that. That's and right. that's really key. That's right. Yeah, yeah that's good. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. For I having appreciate me. My pleasure. Yeah. Uh,